Since October of 2011, the NCAA has begun instating reforms to spark paying these college athletes. Throughout the past few years, the NCAA has made reforms in academics, enforcement, resource allocation rules, and student athlete well-beings. Inside these reforms, there are different aspects of, to argue paying athletes, but the vast majority argues paying these talented young adults, such as schools permitted to pay expenses and reasonable benefits to student athletes for national team tryouts, practices, and competitions. It permits schools to pay expenses for student athletes representing the school in practice, competition, and non-competitive events. It permits conferences or the NCAA to pay a student athletes medical expenses. And it permits conferences or the NCAA to pay for academic support, career counseling, or personal development. The NCAA makes billions of dollars off college sports. However, the athletes themselves see no direct financial return. Greg Johnson, who worked in college athletics at Rutgers, and now writes to help benefit these athletes by persuading his peers and the community to pay these college athletes. In his article, The NCAA Makes Billions and Student Athletes Get None of It, he informs others where the profit from all the sporting events goes. All television, revenue, ticket sales, and jersey sales, like likeness promotions, and other sources of income go to the NCAA, the coaches, the student, the schools, the event staffs, but none of it goes to the athletes. These athletes are putting their bodies on the line and are the reason for all the profit, yet they do not di directly find it, do, do not find do not directly gain from their talent. Also in the US News and World Report debate, um, it says broadcasting companies make about $1 billion off Final Four games. This billion dollars is pure profit for its broadcasting companies and the unpaid workers, the athletes, are getting no direct financial return. These college athlete athletes have no way of financially providing for themselves. The athletes are devoting hundreds of hours a year to make themselves better, which betters the team. After they spend their entire week studying, doing schoolwork, attending school, and giving hours upon hours to the team, there is no time to get a job and provide for themselves for outside expenses such as food or any um, utility that you have to pay for. After these students have given to their teams in school, they should be paid in order to provide their basic needs. Shabazz Napier, a Yukon Husky, um, said that he constantly went to bed hungry because he had no way of paying for food. Negative. Some athletes receive a scholarship which gives them free education. They receive these scholarships for their athletic abilities among their grades that meet the set standards to attend the university. According to the College Board, the average cost of college at public universities is $9,139 per year for in-state residents. The average athletic scholarship is $8,700. Although most athletes will not receive that much, it covers almost all of the tuition. Athletes do not have to pay this amount like non-student athletes. Block, a former athlete, argues the experience of playing on a college team itself is valuable, working much like an unpaid internship for other students. Some universities require students to work internships. Many of these internships are unpaid and require much of the student's time. They do not have time to get a paying job along with being a student, but they are not trying to fight for compensation. The NCAA and state taxes have to cover most of the expenses spent in many Division I athletic departments. Just 23 of the 228 athletic departments at NCAA Division I public schools generated enough money on their own to cover their expenses in 2012, which causes a strain on individual state budgets that supplement public schools' athletic programs. 
these subsidies, a sum of money granted by the government or a public body to assist an industry or business so that the price of a com commodity or service may remain low or competitive, hit an all-time high in 2012 at 71 million paying to over 200 different universities distributed among multiple sports. This is a major issue when trying to get athlete, athletes paid without the support of money outside of the NCAA and taxpayers' dollars. With these subsidies being used to fund the athletic programs that were not originally part of the university's initial academic institution, it causes the overall question of whether or not athletics should be continued at universities. Playing for any university is a privilege, not a job. By the standards of the National Labor Relations Board in Chicago, a college athlete can technically be considered an employee. The pay, however, is the scholarship money that they receive. Money is not what college sports were created for. As a child, many dream about playing the game they love for their entire life, not about how much money they will make from it. Very few people get the opportunity to play a college sport. 